Now, I don't want to name any names, but other StarCraft content creators on YouTube have recently come out and said that this particular Zerg versus Terran is the game of the year. Now, in my defense, it's been several weeks since we had a game of the year, so this is going to be one of the games of the year of the year. Either way, I have no idea what ends up going down in this match, and I'm excited to find out, because spawning right here in the top right hand corner of Royal Blood, playing with the blue Zerg drones, we have a man I feature eh, every once in a while on my YouTube channel. He's from South Korea, and he goes by the name of Dark. His opponent in the opposite corner, with the red Terran pieces from France. Someone I actually don't get to cast nearly as often as I would like to recently. Seems to me that he's not playing in nearly as many tournaments as he used to a year or two ago. From France, we're looking at Clem's main comment center. Alrighty, so, a Zerg versus Terran between these two. Dark, of course, known for his ridiculously scrappy gameplay. This man loves creating chaos and then, well, somehow, some way, seems to be very comfortable in a, a game that nobody has ever seen before. Base races, early game aggression. Honestly, Dark is capable of everything. What's so fun about Dark is that he goes for a lot of aggression and he goes for a lot of early game pushes, even though he's one of the very best late game Zerg players on the planet. Clem, of course, very well known for his bio play. This guy is incredibly fast. When it comes to high APM StarCraft 2 players, I mean, this is very early on into the match, of course. But when it comes to high APM players, Clem and Raynor are the two players that really come to my mind. And I've, well, I've been able to uh, watch them play in real life as well with uh, a variety of tournaments. And if you ever get the chance, you'll see that these two are incredibly fast. And I would say that Clem is maybe even a little bit quicker. APM-wise, as far as, like, raw numbers go, I think that Raynor technically wins. But, uh, repeat raids and rapid fire and all the rest of all of those mechanics that, well, StarCraft 2 players use. Uh, I, I, do think, I do think discussing APM is a little overrated. But if you ever get the chance to watch Clem live, I highly recommend you uh, observe the speed on the keyboard. And it's not just speed. It's also accuracy, right? So already... I know that Clem, for example, is very feared, especially on the European ladder, for his... Ooh -hoo -hoo! Okay, that was almost a disaster. I was going to compliment his Reaper play. Um, that would have been kind of funny, I suppose, if he would have lost it right as I, uh, as I said it. But a lot of players do not like to play against that Reaper of Clem because he gets more value out of it than pretty much anybody else. Anyways, I was talking about it. Dark opening up with, well, skipping the Metabolic Boost. He's got enough gas for it, and instead he decided to go for a Roach Warren. So, once again, this is the Dark Special, this is what he likes to do. Even though this is something that Clem can technically scout, it's kind of difficult, right? You basically have to YOLO in the Reaper and get some vision inside of the main base of the Zerg. If he wants to scout it, he should jump right over here into the main base and then make a big loop around the Zerg's main. Yeah, instead Clem is going to be sending it back home, knowing the timing at which that link speed normally finishes. He doesn't want to lose the Reaper, because, well, the Reaper is also very useful when it comes to that base defense. Clem is going for his, uh, well, his preferred build, right? This is something that Clem popularized over the years. Originally, this was considered quite a greedy opener. But I love the Benchy over here. That's actually going to be fantastic right now for Clem. Uh, the triple CC start. This is the Clem special. This is something he loves doing. This is one of those builds where you can basically defend whatever the Zerg's throwing at you, assuming you micro everything correctly, right? So that's the big assumption. Right now he sees the Roach, because you do get that blind Benchy here, but you also do get a third command center. So you're not really forced to deal a lot of damage on the other side of the map. One of the problems you run into with a lot of the Terran builds is that you kind of are expected to deal some damage on the other side. But with an opener like this, you don't really need to. That being said, though, yeah, he needs to control this very well. Love that Reaper, by the way. Constantly throwing grenades, being a little bit obnoxious and mostly just buying time. Now the Banshee is available. This is a blind Banshee. It's not something that Clem really... Yeah, he, he didn't know he needed it, but it's going to be incredibly helpful. And this push is getting shut down easy peasy so far here by our French Terran player. This is the main downside, man, of going for a blind Roach push. When your opponent happens to go for a blind Benchy, you fall pretty far behind. And this is a triple CC Benchy as well, so it's not even the fastest possible one that we can uh, we can hope for. <laughs> nice little bit of micro right there. Oh, on the Hellion. And the Hellion will stay alive. Okay, so in the end. 
quite a few Terran units here have gone down, but that is a lot more losses there for Zerk. Because, of course, he skipped the link speed and, well, he still hasn't gotten it. He decides to spend his next 100 gas on a lair instead. So, that is uh, all a little bit greedy. Okay. Clem is looking at this as an opportunity to go for Hyperflight Rotors, which... I don't think I've really seen him play before. I mean, like I said, I haven't seen him play all too much over the last couple of months, but this is a really fun build. The uh, other top level Terrans have been messing around with this quite a bit. Both Maru and Gumiho come to mind. They've been, uh, even Oliveira, the world champion, has been playing this quite a bit too. Um, they've been going for this upgrade. So this is an upgrade that's a little bit cheaper as of the most recent StarCraft 2 balance patch. Basically what it is, is a speed buff for the Banshee. Now Banshees are already pretty fast. And obviously, they will only get quicker with an upgrade like this. The question is, though, how many benches do you want to produce, right? So this is still very much so up in the air. Oh, he's gonna... Oh, okay, I thought for a second he was gonna run by. It seems like most of the Terran players at this point opt for about four benches and then maybe more later on. But it's easy to get a little carried away with the benchy production, too. This is gonna be full battle mech, by the way, I believe, right here for Klim. Um, he's gone for, yeah, Cyclones right now. He's, he's going for the additional factories, which is really cool to see. Clem has historically always very much so been a, a bio Terran, so somebody who's really good when it comes to microing his Marines and his Marauders, and his Medivacs, of course, and his Ghosts and all the rest of it, but this is gonna be him playing that much more agile style of mech, something that has also been popularized once again over the last couple of months. Alrighty. So, even though Dark started off this game in the driver's seat, he's gonna be forced to play defensively right now. Now, of course, I've casted a lot of his games over the last few weeks, and we've all seen him play defensively. He's incredibly good at it. Going for the quick pathogen glance, that's the Infestor Energy upgrade. He is probably gonna look to fungal these Hellions and Cyclones, and maybe even the Benchies too. Speaking of Benchies, here we go. There's no detection available just yet. There we go, the Overseer coming forward. But look how quick these benchies are. They're gonna be able to get away and maybe even kill this hatchery? Yeah, I think so. There we go. Good console right there by Dark. He does save the drone as well, but that is still gonna slow him down a little bit. Okay. Love the positioning, by the way, on these Hellions. So, I've been watching a lot of StarCraft 2 over the weekend, and it seems that a lot of Zerg players, whenever they're playing against this mass benchy style, what they should do is go for a counterattack. So basically, as soon as the Benchies come towards your side of the map, you go for a counterattack with either Zerklings or Roaches. Um, uh, Clem clearly is aware of that. He's been posturing on these, like, what do you call these? These lanes, I guess? It's almost like a MOBA map, right? Royal Blood. Um, he's been uh, protecting the middle lane as well as the bot lane just to make sure that he uh, yeah, doesn't get caught with his pens down against a Roach counterattack, just keeping the Zerk player continuously occupied. In the meantime, though, Infestors are coming up. Hive already coming up as well right now for Dark. And the Benchies decide to group up with the Cyclones and the Hellions here. Okay, I'd love to see that. The damage output on all these Benchies is significant. And, well, he's already gone past four. Yeah, we're up to five Benchies here. Fungal Growth, though, is an option right now. You gotta be so careful. Those Infestors are haunting. And there we go, that should be a Fungal. There he is. The question is, though, is there enough? Yeah, there is enough. That was an overextension right there from our Terran player for sure. He didn't need to go too deep right there with the Benchies. And that's why I think a lot of Terran players probably want to stick on like four Benchies. Because they are very much so glass cannons. Still not a bad trade though here for... Ooh, especially if you can get the Infestors. That is lovely. Yeah, still not a bad trade right there for our Terran player. Getting a lot of those expensive Zerg units out of the equation is always nice. Problem is, though, this is not where the army composition for our Zerk is going to end, right? We see more of mostly the same right now, although there were a couple Widow Mines coming up, too. I almost wonder if that's a misclick. But anyways, um, we have, yeah, more of the same right here from our Terran, so he's gonna stick around on Hellion Cyclone Benshee. Whereas on the other side of the map, we've got Infestors, of course, mixed in, but now also an addition of the Lurker Den. The Lurkers are gonna be absolutely fantastic. Lurkers can be used really nicely offensively, but they can also be great defensively. And that's something that Clem needs to be very careful of. So, Cyclones are amazing when you can run, right? When you can constantly kite those units that you're engaged with uh, backwards. But at some point, you run out of map, right? If the Zerk is right over here, you can't really run much further, and you can't really micro those units very well. So, 
If Dark can force those Cyclones into a corner and then burrow a couple of Lurkers, he's going to be in a phenomenal spot. And I think that's probably his, uh, his plan in this particular game. Okay. Now, this is a good transition right here. Um, we have Ghosts coming up right now. So, Ghosts are fantastic, of course, with their EMP. Uh, cute little bit of micro right there by Clem. Not bad at all. 11 drones so far in total. Um, there seem to be two schools of thought right now with battle mech transitions. One that Gumiho has been showcasing that I think is really cool. And I actually want to make a few videos on that as well. So if you aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, make sure you do so. So you get notified as soon as those videos go live. But something that Gumiho has been experimenting with is rather than transitioning towards ghosts, he's been transitioning towards blue flame hellbats with metavex. And what he does is he boosts the Metavex forward and then he drops them on top of all of the heli or sorry, on top of all of the um, uh, the Hydralisks and the Lurkers. So they basically are yeah, forced to fire at units that, well, will not cause them to do too much splash damage. And if you can drop Blue Flame Hellions on top of a whole lot of, or I guess Blue Flame Hellbats on top of a whole lot of uh, Hydralisks, they get roasted very quickly. Super cool transition, and not something that we see all too often, but definitely something that has a lot of potential. Now, this is a much more micro-heavy army, but I do think that Ghost Mech is ultimately the best unit comp that, uh, yeah, Terran players can go for. It's incredibly powerful. He's even now already going for the single upgrade here as well for those ghosts. So, a lot of the ghost value comes out of not so much their auto attacks, but their spells. So, upgrading, yeah, just their armor makes a whole lot of sense. Relatively cheap. One thing, though, to note right here for our Terran player is that the armory upgrades are pretty late. So, you don't really need armory upgrades as quickly with Battle Mech. He prioritized armor, which makes a lot of sense. Same reason as the ghosts. Uh, the cyclones, they get most of their damage out of the lock-on. And the lock-on ability uh, does not actually uh, get more powerful with upgrades. But Clem, yeah, certainly a little bit late right there on those upgrades. And you can tell right now that Dark is feeling a whole lot more comfortable already. After that failed early game push, he managed to stabilize. And he's got a very stellar economy right now as well. He's basically just looking at what he wants to make. This guy's going shopping, okay? He's just buying whatever he likes. This is how I imagine rich people go and, and shop, okay? They just, you know, point at stuff and then they get it, right? Like, that's that's basically what Dark's doing. He wants two Spires, he wants a Nidus network, he wants, well, upgrades wherever he can, Bailing Nest coming up as well. This guy is just getting whatever he can afford, and it turns out he can afford a lot. Ten additional drones go down, but, well, he's gonna replace some of that lost supply with additional drones, but also with seven more Lurkers, and Lurkers are pretty good. Okay, so the game has slowed down just a little bit. Or it has slowed down. <laughs> I know some of you get upset whenever I say slowed down. <laughs> it just seems... There are English verbs where the past tense is it's just... It makes no sense, okay? Like, you imagine that at some point... Oh, these are some very nice abductions, actually. You imagine at some point that, uh, yeah, English uh, has some sort of logic to it, but no. Lurkers inside of the main base. Technically a good choice, but I mean, even though Clem shows up a bit late to defend this... Okay, he uh, pushes it back pretty smoothly there. I actually really like the fact that Dark also decided to go back through the worm. He looked at that and he's like, nah, don't really want it. Double Spire. One of them is going to be morphed into a Greater Spire. We've got a load of upgrades, triple Evolution Chamber. I mean, Dark is just getting everything. Now, in the meantime, on the other side of the map, Clem is also taking a lot of bases. The expansion in the bottom right, well, it's got a Barrowed Roach on it. He wanted to do the same thing over here. That command center is not placed correctly. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, at this point in the game, not a huge deal, but maybe later on that will come into play. Clem moving forward. Lovely game so far. Very high level match. Both players could have easily lost this. But now we're getting into the ultimate late game. So we're getting to the point... Oh, we even have got a, uh, an NG bay, uh, a second NG bay available right now for double upgrades. But we're now getting to the point where both players can make their ultimate armies twice. Right? So if you look at their army value, I mean, we're not quite there yet. We don't even have bingling speed yet. 
Yeah, okay. Centrifugal Hooks is gonna finish up momentarily. That's mostly here to take care of all of those ghosts and then the, uh, the Hellbats as well, but... Army values here are very high. Honestly, in the late game... Oh, here we go. Is he really gonna commit as soon as Bingling Speed finishes up? He does. This is expensive, though. I don't really know if I like this all too much right here by our Zerg player. He loses a lot of units. Anyways, when it comes to late game control... Serral is, of course, very good. Raynor is, of course, very good. But I think when it comes to playing with the Zerk, I've been most impressed by Dark lately. I mean, admittedly, I've been watching a lot of Dark games, and he seems very comfortable playing this style, whereas Raynor and Serral don't really share as many of their replays. But Dark seems incredibly comfortable accepting some losses, right? So once again, he comes forward right here, and he sees an opportunity, and he strikes it. Yeah, he's gonna immediately take care of a few of these tanks. Ghosts do have to run, and they do actually, uh, yeah, get some snipes off from a distance. Big actually mentioned this, another StarCraft 2 commentator. He also uploads YouTube videos, by the way. You should definitely go check out his channel. But he mentioned the other day, and I really like this. He mentioned that usually when StarCraft players take losses, they feel bad for at least a minute or two, right? You're like, oh my god, I should have never taken that engagement. That is so bad. Why did I do that? Oh my god, I've made this mistake so many times before. Why did I just do it again? Dark seems to be very quick at moving past that, which is an interesting skill. I, I never really thought about it that way, but I actually really do believe that that is true. Dark makes mistakes, but he's like, okay, what's the best move right now? What should I be doing? And he doesn't really, he doesn't really contemplate the mistakes that he's made while in the game. Yeah, I'm sure he does when he's, you know, not playing the game, when he's looking at the replays or something like that. But he's very quick at making that transition from my previous best moment to what should I be doing next. Like, my previous best move to what I should be focusing on now. And it shows. Like, he's, he's very, very nimble when it comes to those decisions. And, well, one of the ways that he does it, of course, is by constantly tech switching. He's got a whole lot of stuff. He can just, yeah make Brute Lords and then go into Ling Bane again, Roach Ravager, Mass Spellcaster, Lurker play. He's got a little bit of everything. 22 SCVs just went down. Sorry, I was blabbering onwards about, well, important things, but where exactly... Wait, was it... So we have eight SCVs that already went down at this point. Okay, I think a lot of those kills were actually just this one Roach over here, trying to just be as obnoxious as possible. It's some of those Zerklings running in as well. I thought maybe I'd missed a very large detonation with Banelinks or something along those lines, but I think it's just a couple SCVs here and there, yeah. A couple Zerklings kill a few of them. The Rocha right over here ended up killing a little bit. Now this Lurker is finishing the job. Okay. I didn't really miss a massive Baneling roll-by. We just have a couple obnoxious units right here for Dark. Does Clem really want to replace those lost SCVs, though, at this point in the game with more SCVs? Honestly, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. He's got so many orbital commands. Nine of them at this point, and he's got three more command centers done that he should probably morph into orbitals, too. He can just replace all of those lost SCVs with mules instead. And that will open up, uh, since mules don't cost any supply, that will open up more supply for an army. 12 Brute Lords are coming up. We have one hell of an army right here for the Zerk, though. This is very difficult to counter. If you can get snipes off on those Brutes, life's gonna be amazing, but these Infestors are here to throw some Fungal Growths down as well. Transfusions right there by the Queens. Very lovely control right here by Dark, all things considered. But he doesn't really, yeah, win this engagement here. He pushes back this Terran, though, and that is most important. Clem right now is gonna get back to safety. He's getting himself the air weapon attacks already. Not really any starport transitions just yet, I don't think. Where is the starport? Yeah, we only have a single one. That's the one from the early game. But maybe he's planning on adding on some more here in just a moment, as now the Brute Lords decide to go for a move. Massive fungal growth right there by our Zerg player. He wants to take down those ghosts. Keep in mind, the ghosts are small but incredibly expensive. Not really a unit that the Terran player can easily replace. I mean, he's got some money in the bank, but honestly, Considering the amount of income that both of these guys have had, they don't really, you know, they don't really have that much cash. Very soon, though, they'll be done upgrading, right? Or at the very least, they have to spend far less resources on upgrading. And uh, that is when we should be seeing the real banks coming into the mix. 
Night is Worm over here does actually deploy a couple of Zerklings, but... Yeah. Lovely little placement right here, though, by Klim. Forcing those uh, Hellions into Hellbats and squeezing them in between the structures. This doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. And here is actually, ooh, a very lovely move right now by Dark. I'll actually back off here, because that is a cute little move that I missed on the minimap. Um, One-man production team, guys. Sometimes I miss something. He decides to burrow an Infestor over here, outside of the range. Neural Parasite on the Ghost, and then double EMP on the other Ghosts. Which removes a lot of the energy right here out of these Terran Spellcasters. And that suddenly, yeah, is gonna allow an amazing engagement right here for Dark. Dark needs to be careful, he doesn't overextend with the Brute Lords, because he doesn't really have that many of them available. There's still some snipes here too. Because those missile turrets on the low ground got destroyed earlier, Clem doesn't actually have any detection here, so I love that move. That Lurker over here on the right still being obnoxious, just darting in between those bases in the bottom right and corner. Okay. Dark's getting a new base up. Um, this game has been in... For, for the most part, right? It's been in full control of the Terran. Clem could basically do whatever he liked, but he didn't really get that much done. Over the last few minutes, Dark has been really dominating the map a lot more. He's stabilizing here very comfortably, getting all of those upgrades, and they're becoming really powerful. Here we have the plus two upgrades coming up as well. Raven in the mix. Love seeing a Raven at this point. Anti-armor missile is amazing, but one thing to keep in mind is that, well, Neural Parasite also works against Ravens, and if you can Neural Parasite a Raven and an Anti-Armor Missile the Terran army, then suddenly those Terran units will drop very quickly. Either way, Advanced Ballistics is coming up too. I did see some additional Starports, or at least one additional Starport. Okay, not getting too many of them. But he could certainly start the transition up towards full-on Sky Terran. Look at that, one Infester, man. There's a Missile Turret finishing up. Ooh, okay, Dark actually moves it away. Dark's actually so on point, man, when it comes to the late game movement. It's very easy to lose track of all of the 17 different uh, traps that you've set up, but... Not in this case. Okay. Nukes are coming up as well. Love that. Nukes are an excellent way to force a positional advantage. Very rarely, I mean, the Solar games come to mind, I suppose. Very, very rarely do we see nukes actually landing on top of the Zerg army at this level of play. It, it you know, it could happen, but it shouldn't. But it's really, it's really good at forcing... Okay, this is a misplay right over here. It's really good at forcing the Zerg player to back off. A couple siege tanks get helplessly donated. Not what you want to do. Dark immediately punishing the mistake. Orbital Command getting very far forward as well. Not entirely sure what the plan is over there, but... Okay. There's another one. Neural Parasites on the Ghost trying to EMP the other Ghost. Turns out the best counter to Ghost is Ghosts. And honestly, that mantra sort of goes as well for Thors, though. Oftentimes, Zerg players don't really have a great answer against Thors, but if you can Neural them, and you can force these Ghosts to... or the Ghosts and, <laughs> and the Thors to temporarily switch sites, that makes the game a whole lot more playable, so... 12 Infestors, not bad at all. Okay. Looks like we're gonna go for a new angle of attack right now, as Clem is moving his entire army towards the left side of the, mis uh, the map, but I'm not entirely sure if that's the correct move. It just leaves these expansions on the right side very exposed. I think Clem is looking to trade some of his own bases for a few bases of the Zerg, but I'm not entirely sure if that is the best call, to be honest. How many Lurkers are still available? Okay, we don't have any Lurkers anymore, so that is something. Uh, Night is where I'm also going up in the middle of the map. This Orbital Command is certainly going to be pushed back. Neural Parasite once again, man. These Neurals are absolutely insane. Um, ooh, anti <laughs> Interference Matrix on a Neural Parasiting Infester. Not something we usually see. Anyways, these stores, they deal a lot of damage. The Banelings are thinking about hunting down the ghosts, but they need to be super careful. Brute Lords now, with the new multiplayer balance patch, are a little bit quicker to reposition themselves. Zerk right here. Wait, is he not mispositioned too? I feel like he should be right in the center of that little carpet, no? But anyways, um... Zerk now taking one of the bases that was previously the Terrans, but Clem has done the same thing over here as well. At the 3 o'clock position, we saw a hatchery in the past. 
Now there's a, uh, well, at least for a little bit, there's a mule mining here, but I don't think it's going to be there for that much longer. Okay. Tactical nuke flying across the map. Spotted immediately, by the way, by Dark. So all Dark sees is this, right? Dark doesn't have an indicator on the minimap or anything along those lines. All he sees is just a small little red dot. In the meantime, there's a fight going on as well. There's so many banelings, though. There are so many banelings. If those banelings can connect in on the ghosts, yeah, that's exactly what he's gonna try and do right now. If those banelings can hunt down the ghosts, that would be absolutely amazing. Huge fungal growth right here by our Zerg player. Absolutely demolishing this entire Terran army. My god. In the meantime, he neural parasited all those stores, blinding clouds on top of them as well. Clem's army just got absolutely swept away. Clem, just a few minutes ago, had everything going for him in this game. But now Dark shows us, yo, if you are gonna give me just an inch, I am gonna just take everything that I can get. And that was a brilliant engagement right there by the Zerk, one of the very best I've ever seen, honestly. That was insane. So much value coming out of all of this Zerk army. Those Banelings patiently waiting for a very long time. Parasitic Bomb as well. Good split right there by Clem. Clem, however, does still have a little bit of cash in the bank. Dark at this point completely broke when it comes to the gas count, so he needs to be careful. Okay, this is now Dark's game to lose. He's got a lot of units coming up, and you can see he's going back to Roaches. That's usually an indicator he wants to win the game soon. He wants to try and see if he can obtain the victory within the next few minutes. I don't know if I agree with that. Don't... Okay, I don't think that's worth it, but anyways. Um, I don't know if I agree with that, because Clem still has a good amount of production, of course. 15 SCVs have once again gone down at this point. Uh, 45 versus 41. Here come the Brutes once again from a distance. Neural Parasite should once more be available, but EMPs do indeed make it difficult for those Infestors. Hello. We do actually see a lot of the Infestors now going down as well. Those Ghosts having a grand old time. They are uh, the main focus of Clem's Micro now after he lost so many of them to the Fungal Growth Baneling combination. Okay, there's still quite a bit though. Yeah, they uh, have enough energy for a Fungal once again. That being said though, this is... The Roach Ravager army, it's not nearly as scary, right? There's quite a bit of supply caught up in those Corruptors as well that really don't serve much of a purpose. Clem also grabbing one of those Brute Lords on the way out. Okay, here's the reinforcing Zerk units once again coming in. I love the transition back towards low tier army when, uh, or low tier armies when the games get a little bit desperate, but I don't think that that was the best move right there for Dark. So, if you look right here at the army value, yeah. I think this really sells the story very well, or tells the story very well. Dark was grabbing a huge advantage right over here when he, well, blew up the entire Terran army. Then he tried obtaining the victory, making a lot of stuff, but he actually overextended. So, it is allowing Clem to once again get a pretty decent army going. Big Daddy Thor shows up as well. He's gonna gun down those Corruptors that are Caustic spraying the Planetary Fortress and while well, the Roaches are gonna try and prevent this from happening, um, maybe the Command Center will still end up going down, but Clem has secured new bases here on the left side of the map. Okay, this repair is also very strong though. Yeah, this Planetary is actually getting quite a bit of value. In the meantime, it's also buying a lot of time. The Terran Army is once again on the move on the left side. Planetary Fortress does fall. But if Clem can take a uh, a hatchery over here, right, and maybe the drones over here too, that would be absolutely amazing for him. Lining up the drones, you love to see it, dealing a ton of damage to them. Zorklings in the meantime also did kill more SCVs, it seems, forcing a lift off on that command center too. But that planetary got a lot of value. The Thor over here getting some value too. Looks like the queens desperately tried to come for their rescue, but. Dark actually now, hmm, with not nearly as impressive of an army anymore. He has lost all 18 Infestors here, all 5 Vipers as well. 8 Queens have gone down. Honestly, he doesn't have much good anymore going for himself. He's got a lot of Zerklings, yes. He's got a lot of Roaches, sure. But none of these units are particularly amazing against the late game Terran army. 
That being said though, Clem doesn't have a lot of siege tanks anymore. I think having around a siege tanks would be really nice. Instead, he's expecting the late game units for the Zerk once again to show up, and it turns out he's right. Although, his ghost count is already quite respectable. <laughs> Trying to morph these, okay, into uh, a Hellbat as well. Eventually, he does get it done. And now Terran apparently has decided, okay, I'll take this, this left side of the map. This was previously mined by the Zerk player. I'm going to be taking that one now instead. This expansion has not run out just yet right here, so... Still a little bit of mining going on here by Dark, although, yeah, Clem is a little bit concerned right now that Zerk is going to try and create a full wraparound. Couple of links here being obnoxious. Their DPS is not to be underestimated. If those ghosts are completely undefended, they will get picked off pretty easily. Okay, well, I mean, Snipe is still pretty good against, again, or I guess against Roaches, right? Against 20 Roaches? Ah, he's got like 20 Snipes available on those 9 ghosts. He can take them down very quickly. Okay. Yeah, so what little money Clem has, he is spending it on ghosts. I wonder if siege tanks would be a good option here. I don't think it would be a bad one, but it also makes his army a lot less mobile, right? And I guess that's what, uh, what Clem is hoping for right now, that he can continuously maneuver against this Zerg force too. Love the one Cyclone here in the mix. Don't know if it's a misplay, but it's getting a little bit of value. Okay. Here we go. Hellbat transition. This is one hell of an army. This fungal growth is really good, though. My god, that is a an amazing fungal growth. The Hellbats are sleeping on the job. I, I think he saw those infestors coming in from a mile away, but he didn't really react to them there very well at all. So that is actually, once again, a lot of losses. And at the same time, a little Zerkling run by. It's only a small count of Zerklings, but 14, 15, 16 SCVs will likely end up going down. A Lurker coming up here on the high ground, but that one will get sniped pretty quickly. This hatchery is going to get destroyed. There's another hatchery now. Well, close to that base that the Terran previously occupied. But 23 SCVs have now found their death over here. Double command center under, uh, under attack. I think if those Hellbats joined the fight, if those Ghosts had split a little bit better, this would have looked a whole lot better right now for Clem. But Clem trying to defend the multiple areas at once. Dark once again creating as much chaos as possible. It allows him those amazing engagements. And now a lot of those Thors are incredibly low in hit points. He's trying his best to, well, shut down all of these Zerg units. But he overextends once again. Clem making some major errors in this game. Overestimating his situation. And it is allowing a lot more damage to come out of these Zerg units. There's really no reason to stay across the map when your units are at red hit points, right? Especially those Thors. Now Clem is finding himself with a very small amount of army supply. And it is going to make it difficult for him to push back the Zerg. I mean, that in combination... Oh, with this Orbital Command right now burning as well. That in combination with all of those SCVs getting picked off... I am not liking the chances right here for Clem anymore, who decides to go into... Well, I guess Marauders. They don't have Stimpak, though, or anything along those lines. And it turns out, after Dark fell behind in the earlier stages of the game, he did what he does best. He stabilized. He got all of his upgrades going, and then he starts hunting for those perfect engagements. And he got a couple of them. He got some amazing fights. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, like I already mentioned earlier, hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon so you get notifications as soon as future videos go live. Plus, it makes my YouTube channel look, you know, more impressive. And if you want to feed my ego, uh, <laughs> you should definitely subscribe.